Hi, I'm Margaret and I've got some really nice meringues for you today. They've got far too much cream in, but we don't worry about that. The meringues have a lovely crisp shell on the outside and a gorgeous marshmallowy bit in the middle. So let's get started. First, mix the corn flour into the sugar. It's the corn flour that gives the meringue its soft, marshmallowy centre. Remember to use a squeaky clean bowl to mix the egg whites. The slightest bit of grease will stop them from whisking up properly. They need to be well whisked before we add the sugar. I usually start with just one spoon to start it off and continue to whisk. And after that, it's little by little until all the sugar's mixed in. Then continue to whisk until it's lovely and shiny and thick. If you rub a little bit between your finger and thumb, you'll be able to feel if it's ready because there won't be any gritty bits of sugar between your fingers. It makes a great glue for sticking your baking paper down. With this type of mixture, we need something to keep it still. I like to use a big spoon to make spoon-sized meringue pieces. But you can make any shape you like. You can even use a piping bag if you want to make it perfectly round or have a nice pattern on top. Once the oven is completely cold, you can take the meringues out and they're ready for the next step. I tend to leave them in the oven overnight and then do this the next day. Melt the chocolate gently in the microwave. It's best if the chocolate's tempered because it will have a nice snap to it when you crunch into the meringue. Apart from tasting really good, the chocolate does a very practical task. It forms a barrier between the cream and the meringue. That way the meringue remains crisp. Now, when I'm doing that, I always seem to get chocolate on top of the meringue, no matter how hard I try. So let's make a drizzle on top of each one. There, now it looks as if it's supposed to be there. So we're very nearly there. The last thing to do is to whip up the cream. I don't add any sugar, but I do add a little bit of almond extract, which I think goes really well with this recipe. Now for the best bit. Once the chocolate's set in the fridge for about half an hour, we can put them together. I need to match up those about the same size. It 
it's always best to put the cream in just before we serve them. There we go, how about that for a treat? I always reckon that if a meringue is not messy, then it's not a meringue. I love the way it melts in the mouth and you have to lick your fingers because they're so chocolatey. Well, thanks for joining me to make meringues today. Have a great week and I'll catch you Monday.